Oh, here he comes. Birch? Yep. He's on the screen. Oh, he got it. <laughs> here we are, we're going to go. You got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had him in my hand. <laughs> Reaching for a nine inch perch. Hey, it was fun though. You know, the eastern part of the state gets a lot of credit for their prairie pothole region. We are on the western edge of that, even farther into it actually in central South Dakota here. And we have a lot of the same lakes and the same type of uh, fisheries, um, just not normally very exploited. We don't have a lot of people that come out and do this kind of bite. So here we are, we're gonna break down how I tear into these lakes. And like the one today, it's uh, they always call them bathtubs. Edges drop in, flat as a pancake, we have the greatest sonars anymore and they have the chart plotters, which out on this situation isn't real effective. So what we do, um, we use these forward facing sonars. Um, some days you can run around with a jig and then fish are active and you'll call a fish in from a long ways. Day like today, they're a little more finicky. We spread our tip ups out, spread them out for a big area. And when one goes off a few times, we start condensing things down. While we're doing that, we're looking with the forward facing sonar. We're searching, searching. You find them on there, you drill holes. Some days they want a minnow sitting there to get them to go. Some days, like I said, you can run around with a jig. Some days you find them with a jig and you gotta go to real small stuff like little tungsten jigs and stuff. But we, uh, we tend to do a lot of this right here where we spread our tip ups. Our, our spread right now is pretty small because we found a little patch of fish these move on or we don't catch any for a while, we're gonna spread them back out and start moving them around and just keeping lines in the water while you're moving around jigging. Just makes you, it's kind of a, a double punch on getting these fish found, located, and caught in a hurry. In South Dakota, you're allowed four lines a piece. Normally, there's a couple of you. If you use all your options, you can put out quite a few tip-ups. We have a couple of the traditional tip-ups out, and then we got our I guess farmer style is what you'd call it. Um, homemade, we just use big spools of line, um, put them on there, they're free spooling. We set them so light and I like them a lot when it's a perch bite. There's zero resistance. That fish touches, he can, he can swim as far as he wants to. It's pretty fun on these lakes like this. You walk up and we're only in five to six feet of water. Those things will turn one color sometimes. They get to spinning fast. And I like that there's no resistance and it's, if you are fishing deeper or when it's real cold, cleaning them up quick is real fast and easy and uh, a whole bunch of them fill it in the milk crate. So they're, they're kind of indestructible and in my business, that's a good thing. All right, well, here you are on the twirly as we call it here in South Dakota. As you can see, I have very little weight on there and anything I put any resistance on it and it takes off. We'll run a bobber on them when we're fishing bigger fish. Um, leave it float on the top or mark the, we mark our depth right below. But with these perch, I keep everything real subtle. I just got even a minnow head on this one. Put it down, I mean, that is so light. There's no resistance. I just set, I like to set red up. Doesn't really matter, it's a preference thing. And uh, like I said, they really detect light bites. We got one going right now out here on the end. So let's we'll see if we can get him. Oh, yeah, it's gonna be a tiny little walleye. <laughs> oh, not anymore. There he goes. He's... Oh, we got a flag going too. I think we found a few of them. This is kind of the telltale point when you walk up in this shallow water. If they're sitting there with it, they'll take off at that last second. He ain't eating it, so I'm gonna just set him down a little bit. Pick it up without putting any resistance on him. And that's kind of the point of the tip-ups. I, uh, I say it's not about catching them a lot of times, getting bites. Once we get them located with these and cover all that water, you will have one line that'll go off 10 times. And I have no idea how them fish can pick. I mean, there's patches of weeds out here and we find that with the forward facing sonar. But more than anything, they'll pull these and they'll bite them minnows and drive you nuts. But it doesn't drive me nuts at all. That just shows me where to target. I'll move in, dig some holes, and do some jigging here. And then you can catch them more finicky fish. But 
all these things, I mean, it's fun when you catch them on them, but it's more, I would much rather catch them on a jig stick, but this is just an easier way to find them so you can. Another walleye. Oh, no, no, just a eh, decent little eater. Man, he pulled hard. He ate it just how you want that tiny little treble hook too, right in the corner of his mouth. Tell you what, he's going to the fish fry. <laughs> All right, well, the same flag's gone off, I guess I don't know how many times, four or five times in the last couple minutes. They're not getting the minnow, and that doesn't always mean they're small fish. We, uh, we see it all the time where them big fish are just being, they're just being finicky. I'm gonna move over here with my jig rod, get set up, and I'm gonna pick that fish off and catch him. I mean, it could easily be a small fish, but there's always the chance we're gonna find the right school and they're just being picky. With a jig rod, you're a lot more precise Ooh, a little better fish. There we go. You know, that's a nine, 10 inch perch there. I'm gonna go ahead and put him in the bucket and get a couple for a meal tonight. Nice, just a perfect eater. Oh, hey, one of the twirlies is going off. Oh, let's get over there and see if we can get one. Oh, no, just another. Ooh, boy, I am gonna have a good meal tonight. That's exactly what we're looking for. You know, just nine, 10 inch perch. There are way bigger ones in this system and we catch them a lot. Um, just happy to have found a few now. I'm gonna get a couple for a meal. You know, South Dakota has real liberal limits on their panfish and stuff like that. I personally don't take advantage of it. I feel like if everybody on this system was taking 15 is what the limit is you're gonna hurt these systems pretty quick. I grab four or five for my family and uh, that's about all I'll keep. And I'll tell you what though, eating these, <laughs> that's as good as it gets right there. When you're asking for the perfect eating and the best tasting fish in the system, man, is that fish gorgeous. Just beautiful with the bright orange fins. He'll fry up real nice and brown and crispy too. All right, well, we've, we've done, a, we had to move four or five times today and now we found an area. We had our set line spread out pretty far. Now we kind of got them in a circle here, have a few extra holes. A lot of guys would take off and move because the bite tapered off, but there's fish here. We're getting little bites, we're marking fish, we're seeing them on the forward looking sonar. Now I'm gonna just bounce around with the uh, jig rod like you would do in a normal situation when you're running and gunning and I'll still leave my tip outs up, but I'm gonna bounce around and see if I can't pick off a few of the active ones quick. All right, so I'm bouncing around. You know, guys, uh, sometimes guys put a lot too much stress on what they're using. On these lakes, I'm more about putting it in front of the right fish. Um, that being said, there'll, there'll be days where I work more horizontal baits like the jig and wrap and go real small on these perch. Usually, I've actually used up to a number five on them a lot. Um, most of the time though, it's spoon. I'm using that, uh, the bros bug spoon and uh, I haven't marked a fish that didn't hit it today. So, I mean, I don't know that it wouldn't have been the same on the jig and wrap. I like this for my hook ratio. They smack this, I tend to get them all the time. So don't put so much into switching lures all day, especially when it's cold and you're, you're fighting it. Put it in front of the fish, put it in front of the right fish and they're gonna eat it. You know, last year, um, we fished this body of water a few times also. Um, this was a fish you didn't even look at, and this year I won't keep this one either. He's a little small for what I'm looking for, but it just goes to show the, you never know on these lakes. They fluctuate so fast. Our walleyes, uh, we, a couple years ago, you couldn't catch a keeper out here. There's a lot of them, 16 to 18s, caught a number of them in that 25 to, I haven't seen one over 27 yet, but it's just fun because these things vary so fast. And one thing about the perch, they grow so fast in these lakes with all the scuds and freshwater shrimp, bugs, everything else is just, well, you can see there's shrimp on his tail. There's a couple baby little shrimp stuck to his tail there. And I mean, this system is just full of them and it makes these fish grow fast and fat. 
That's a trans slender one there. He's a little skinny for us, but we'll let him go. Oh, hey, look at here. One of our uh, side ones are going off. We'll go catch one on the tip up. You know, it's funny on this system, they, uh, the walleyes, especially the big walleyes, they don't move very far. You'll look down the hole and your marker will only be a, a foot or two from where it started to begin with. You'll go to pick it up and it's a great big walleye. Most of the time, the perch, you come up and they take off. They're a little spookier, so I'm hoping this is a big walleye, but we'll see here. Just a little slack. I'll pick it up and see if he's here. Nope, he let go of it. So it's probably a perch. He just gave it a pull. Didn't like what he felt, but that's what it's here for, is to find them for us. The minnow's good. Put it back down and see if it goes off again. If it does, we'll move over here with a jig rod. So what are you two up to? Oh, look at here. Heck yeah. Now you know you're living right. We're out here catching perch and my kid pulls up with a couple boxes of pizza for us. So that's roughing it. I know everybody can't handle this hard a lifestyle, but we seem to manage out here in South Dakota. <laughs> oh, look at there. Heck, I think there's even enough for a camera guy. <laughs> are you camera shy, Sass? Hey, tell us about it. Are there fish here? Tell us about it. Oh, am I glad she came across the breadsticks and didn't eat them all. All right, we better get a bait and get back to work here. <laughs> oh, there it went. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, that ain't a perch. That feels much better. Nice little walleye. Perfect. Well, let's turn around here so we can see him in the sun, but you know, just a 14, 15 inch walleye. Beautiful colors. Wow, is he pretty. That is perfect for the last. That's probably one of the last ones I'll put in the bucket. That'll make a perfect meal for me. He, uh, he swam a lot of line off that. And we're getting a little later in the day, as you can see, and I'll expect more of these now as the sun goes down. Um, last year when the water was dirty in this lake, they bit all day. Now with the clean water, it's more of an evening thing. So catch perch during the day and walleyes right at dark, it don't get much better than that. Oh, another one in the hole. I don't know why I keep getting wet for perch I'm gonna let go anyway, but nice. Hey, they're fired up again. You know, this is exactly what we talked about all day long. This one twirly would not stay down. It constantly would get bit. We did catch quite a few fish on it too, but I moved up here with the jig doing just what we said, let this find them for you. And this has been busy. I mean, we ran to get another twirly, come back, and there was one hanging on there just while we were sitting here waiting for us. So. It's uh, plan executed, plan worked here. It's kind of, uh, took us plenty of time, but that's fishing, you know, it, every day isn't just go out and catch them real easy. And one thing about this system, you cover a ton of water and uh, hopefully make it a little easier for yourself. So, All right. yeah, here comes another one. There we go. Yeah, maybe oh, a little bit more to it. Get out of there, there we go. Heck yeah. Now that's more what we're after. That's a beautiful fish. Perfect representative of what we catch a lot of on this lake. Um, they get a lot bigger, but that's as nice as it gets right there. I will uh, see if I can get this hook out of him. That old bro bug is buried in there just perfectly. We'll leave it in there for him, so. Nice fish. Excellent. Yeah. You know, that's probably gonna finish me out for the day. I can get home and uh, still eat 
fresh fish for supper and gonna beat the sun's not even close to going down. So I got a walleye, I don't need to catch any more of them. I target walleyes all summer. I live and die for these things in the winter. Um, ah, I live for whatever will bite, but today was a fun perch day, so. Thanks for joining us, this was a blast. I, uh, I can't tell you how much fun I have chasing around and going back to chasing the twirlies kind of brings me back to old school when I was growing up. We've been doing that a lot of years and kind of have added into the perch arsenal and it's it's been a good one, so great day. <laughs>